devices? No. Any transmitting devices in the automobile? Yes, I had a police radio. Were there cars blocking your view of the dumpster? No, there wasn't. Was the dumpster on the street or was it someplace else? It was on the street. And about how far from you was it? It was about 25, 30 feet. Was there anything that obstructed your vision of the dumpster? No. The conversation that you indicate took place at the dumpster were the two subjects between the dumpster and your automobile, or were they on the far side of the dumpster or on the side of it? Mr. Hernandez was more to the side. Mr. Bernal was more behind it. Okay. So your view of Mr. Bernal was blocked in part by the dumpster? A little bit, yes. How much of it could you see? About half. And would that be from the waist up? It would be from center over. Okay. So you're looking at either his left side or his right side? Yes. Was the dumpster tall enough so that you would block the rest of your view of him? Or was he turned away from you? It would just, <clears throat> the back part of the dumpster was a little higher than the front part. So I could see his face and about a little more than half of his body on the left side, his left. Was he facing away from the dumpster or toward it? Toward the dumpster. Did the dumpster open on that side that he was on? It was open. Okay. Do you recall what Mr. Hernandez was wearing? Yes. What was he wearing? He was wearing a blue Levi jacket, fur lined with and tan pants. Was he at the driver's door or the passenger door of your automobile while he was having this conversation with you? Driver's side. Driver's side. And then he walked away from you back toward the dumpster? Yes. So I take it then that there was a time at which he was out of your view? Maybe for a moment. I could watch him in my side view mirror at first when he was walking back. When he got behind my car, I could see him in the inside rear view mirror. So there may have been a dead spot there, but you are not sure? There probably was for a split second. Sometimes the mirrors overlap each other's coverage too. What kind of an automobile were you in? A Buick, full size. Is that your personal automobile or is that something that you had for undercover purposes? Undercover purposes. Do you know what model it was? No. Some various models of automobiles have large back windows, others have small. How large a back window would you describe in this car? It's got a pretty big back window. And you made your observations of what transpired behind you through the rear view mirror? Yes. Your only observation of Mr. Bernal then would have been through the rear view mirror? Yes. And you had no conversation with him at any time? No. Do you have any recollection at any time of seeing Mr. Hernandez with his hands in his pocket? No. Now, you mentioned that what you observed at the dumpster was Mr. Bernal reaching into the dumpster and removing something? Yes. Was that a container that you could observe him open, or did it appear as though it was already opened? It appeared that the top was open, yes. Did you see him do anything with it? Other than pick it up, reach in, and pull out a paper bindle, and then put it back, nothing else. So from your position, looking through the rearview mirror 25 to 30 feet away, you observed him reach into the box and remove something from it? Yes. And it's your testimony through that distance through the mirror, you were able to determine it was a dark bindle? Yes, small, square, rectangular bindle. Is that something that you could resolve through your rearview mirror or only after the delivery? You could conclude that it was a bindle as opposed to some other small object. Well, looked, being that I've done this a few times, it looked to me like it was a bindle that he was handing him. And then it was confirmed through the subject, and Mr. Hernandez gave it to me. As Mr. Hernandez came back to you, was there a time at which or during which he had his hands in his pockets? No, I didn't see him put his hands in his pockets. Did you see what Mr. Bernal did after he did that? He just remained back near the dumpster, back up on the sidewalk. And then after Mr. Hernandez came to you, you drove out of the, there? Yes. And it was how long before you came back? Within five minutes. During the transaction itself, was there anyone else within, say, 15 feet of the dumpster? There may have been, yes. Are you unsure? I don't recall if anybody was. There was other people in the area. Whether they were near the dumpster at the time when I was watching him, I couldn't see anybody near the dumpster. Did you see anyone else hand something to Mr. Hernandez? No. Were there times when Mr. Hernandez was coming back from the car that... Again, he would have hit a dead spot and be out of your view? Possibly, yes, for a split second. I have no further questions. Thank you, sir. We've completed the examination of this witness, I take it? Yes, Your Honor. May he step down? Yes, Your Honor. You are excused. You may join the prosecutor at the table if you like. Your Honor, I believe that Mr. Bernal, for the purpose of preliminary hearing, would stipulate that the black bindle was examined by John Hartman who is a qualified criminalist employed by the Orange County Sheriff's Department 
analyze the contents and determine the white powder to contain cocaine for the purpose of preliminary only, for the purpose of this hearing so stipulated, and the people would have no further evidence at this time. And there is no stipulation on behalf of Mr. Hernandez. There is no stipulation on behalf of Mr. Hernandez. I take it that the people are presenting no evidence concerning count two. That's correct, Your Honor. Is there a motion for count one? To dismiss. That's the 11359, Your Honor. Count two pertains only to Mr. Bernal. There is a motion to dismiss by the defense and it is granted. Have I heard a motion? And if I have, someone's going to have to remind me of it concerning count one or have you rested? I've rested at this point, Your Honor. All right, is there any defense? No, Your Honor, there is none. Your Honor, the people would make a motion to hold the defense to answer as charged on count one. Mr. Bernal on a theory that he aided and abetted a sale and Mr. Hernandez on a theory that he made an offer to sell, which are both contained within 11352. All right, that is the motion before the court. Anyone wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. We believe that there is not sufficient evidence to hold Mr. Hernandez to answer on count one in that, as the district attorney's conceding, it is not suggested to the court that there's evidence that he sold any. Could you please address the offer to sell? That's really what we're looking at. And with regards to the offer to sell, absent the showing of some evidence that there was, in fact, specific intent at the time, any words or offer were made to actually follow through and sell cocaine, there is no evidence of an offer. I would submit to the court that the mere words uttered by Mr. Hernandez would not in and of themselves support an offer to sell or hold him to answer on offer to sell and that why not mr curran why did we use the words mere words it always comes out attorneys start saying mere words we've got him asking for a quarter and you get a price quoting and haggling and a price change from 25 to 20. how would those mere words not constitute because i think as the court is no doubt aware were any one of us simply to order the words in whatever type of context, do you want cocaine or do you want cola, that would not be a violation of the section. Absent in evidence that there was a true intent and seriousness behind those words to actually, at some point, even if it never actually occurs, but that there must be the intent to follow through with the actual sale of the contraband substance of cocaine in this case. Now in this particular case, we heard facts that there was a conversation that there was a transfer of some type of substance that I've forgotten if we heard an actual description of it, but perhaps was a white powdery subject without any evidence as to what that was. And I think that without knowing what that is, we can't conclude what the intent was in passing it because if it were talcum powder or some other non-controlled substance, then we would not have the intent to make a sale of cocaine. We haven't heard any type of evidence offered that that is what the substance was or other evidence as to what the specific intent was of Mr. Hernandez when these words were uttered. All right, anything, Mr. Curran? It's submitted on the motions. I do wish to be heard on bail. All right, <clears throat> we'll get around to that before we lose any jurisdiction. And I'm sure that the people are submitting on the basis of the argument so far presented. Yes. Unless you wish to make it for the record. No, I think the record is clear, Your Honor. Now, before we lose jurisdiction in this matter, and before I rule on any bind over, in case there is a bind over, somebody wishes to be heard on bail. Is that one of you or both of you? On behalf of Mr. Bernal, he's been a resident of the United States for 12 years. He is employed, has been working a year for the same employer. He's 43 years old, has no prior record whatsoever. And submitted on bail, Mr. Beckett, if there's a bind over. Well, Your Honor, there are two misdemeanors that we would ask to address today also, which I don't know if they... I do not have any other files of Mr. Hernandez in front of me. I would think they would have come from that same court. They were not from... They were not in Division 10. They were previously bench warranted. They had not been put together with the felony file. Well, Mr. Curran, I'm available all day as soon as you can get them there. Have you requested them of my clerk? Yes, I have. As soon as we have them all available and it is convenient for you to come to me, I'll come to you. Okay. As far as Mr. Hernandez's bail, he's 21 years old. Well, just turned 22, I guess, a few days ago. Has resided half of his life, 10 years, in Southern California, which was in... Grange County. He worked four years for a machine shop. 
We would ask that the court consider an OR or a reduction in bail at this point. The people submit the matter? Well, Your Honor, the only information I would offer... Unless you're asking to raise the bail. I'm not asking if the bail would be raised. I would add that regarding Mr. Grinnell, the marked money that the officer in this transaction paid for the cocaine was found in Mr. Grinnell's pocket at the time of the arrest. And while we didn't present evidence of it, I think the court can consider for the purposes of bail, there were two instances. You're not pitching to raise the bail? No, we're not. That matter can be submitted. In this instance, and in the case as to the remaining count one, regarding Mr. Hernandez and Mr. Bernal, it appears to me that the offense within the within mentioned complaint, a felony 8700099, has been committed and that there is sufficient cause to believe that Jose versus Bernal and Amir Guzman Hernandez, guilty of the crime charged in count one, I order that each of them be held to answer for that same charge and information to be filed by the people. Your Honor, for the record. In Department 80 on February 9, 1987 at 9 a.m. for the record. Mr. Hernandez's name is Javier and not Amir. Oh, all right. The people I take it will appropriately file the information with that information. Yes, sir. I don't, I don't have Okay. This is more uh, 200 practice. We have Mr. Seeley for the plaintiff, Mr. Hernandez for defense, and plaintiff attorney, Mr. Seeley. I'm the witness. I am the court. I am attorney for defense, Mr. Hernandez. Oh, yeah. The end of the question, yeah. the question by Mr. Seeley on the record. Approximately what time was it when you arrived at that location? Shortly after midnight. I think it was 12.05. And did you make contact at that time with Deputy Ridenauer? Yes. Did you have a conversation with him? Yes. And as a result of that conversation, did you decide to enter a residence? Yes. What, her, what residence did you want to enter? The address was 720 Imperial. What was your reason for wanting to enter that address? We had decided with the information we had that assault with a deadly weapon had occurred and responsibles were within the residence armed with weapons. And was there some reason why you didn't go get an arrest warrant? At that time, it just occurred moments prior to our arrival and we had sufficient backup units and possibility of the crime continuing or possibly other subjects hurt inside. We felt that we needed to take action at that time. And did you make arrangements to enter that residence? Yes, we did. What happened in that regard? We, I made contact at the front door, knocked on the door, and identified myself. There was a long pause, and you could hear movement within the residence, and then pretty soon the door opened, and I believe it was one of the subjects said, come on in or something. Do you know who invited you in? I believe it was Mr. Kovac or Zovac. Is the person who invited you in present at this time? Yes. Would you point him out, please? He's in the orange jumpsuit right here. May the record reflect that's Mr. Novak, Your Honor? Zovac, Mr. Seeley. All right. What did you do upon entering the residence? We immediately took everybody that was in the residence and got them into the living room area, searched everybody for weapons as we were still trying to find the weapons that were involved. Did you receive any information about weapons at the residence? Yes, we did. And what weapons were you looking for? We were advised by the victim that we were looking for a 357 Magnum revolver and a sawed-off shotgun. And what did you see upon your entering the residence? I observed subject, one subject in the living room area and a female subject and another male subject in the northwest bedroom. Also, I observed two six-packs of Pepsi bottles, which appeared to have wicks and a gasoline-colored substance within them, sitting in the, just inside the door of one of the bedrooms. Was anyone in the bedroom at that time? No, not at that time. And what was your reason for being in the location where you saw the Pepsi bottles? To get the, to check for any other subjects in the house, we looked in all the rooms and to look for the weapons. And did you yourself check the rooms for other persons? I only went to the living room and kitchen area. The other assisting deputies checked the other rooms initially. 
And did you see anyone that would, any evidence that would tend to indicate who was living at that residence? Yes, in the Northwest bedroom when I went in there, there was a nightstand type affair in one of the corners and it had a large amount of personal belongings, papers. I noticed a paper with Timothy Zovac's name on it. It was some sort of a parole paper. And did you have to open anything to see this? No. How did you observe that? That was laying along with looked like a photo album on this table. Was there contact made with a parole officer? Yes, there was. Objection, Your Honor. I don't see the relevancy. What is the relevancy? We're going to get into a further search of the residence, I think, Your Honor. All right, objection is overruled. And was there a request to search the residence from the parole officer? Yes. What was that based upon? I was advised by Officer Hatton, who had made contact through our radio desk, with the parole officer that the subject involved there were on parole and under the conditions of parole that we would be authorized to search the residence for other items that were eventually confiscated. And who did you believe lived there that was on parole? Well I believe all the subjects that we approached uh, lived there. There was Mr. Zovac's personal belongings which appeared like he lived there and there was some female clothing which appeared to come from the female subject that we apprehended. And after you received information from the parole office, did you conduct a further search? Yes. What did you find as a result of that search? Numerous paraphernalia items. We found some marijuana and and some tie sticks. Where were those located at? It they were located in the northwest bedroom underneath some blankets and sheets by the bed. Did you see anything that would indicate who was staying in that bedroom? Well, there was the bedroom in which Mr. Zovac's papers were. And how much marijuana did you find? I believe it was 50 marijuana cigarettes and five tie sticks. Do you have the package that contains that marijuana? Yes. And how do you recognize it? It was placed into evidence by Deputy Ridenauer, and I was assisting him in inventorying all the evidence. What else did you find? As I indicated, the fire bombs we located, and in the clo closest closet in the northwest bedroom, there was a trap door on the floor of the closet. I opened that door. Laying in the dirt on the ground was a blue handkerchief with just a small, just the end of the barrel of what appeared to be a handgun sticking out. Back on the record, a question by Mr. Seeley. Did you examine that gun? Yes. What kind of a handgun was it? It was a 357 Magnum. Was it loaded? Yes. Did you find any other weapons within the residence? Within the residence, we did not. In the garage on top of the rafters was a loaded 12-gauge shotgun. Did you examine the contents of any of the bottles that you described? I didn't open any of them. But there was an odor of what smelled like gasoline, and there were manufactured manila rope wicks and corks in them. And what was the color of liquid in the bottles? Kind of an orange color. How many of the bottles had liquid in them? I'm not sure to the amount that had the liquid in them. Most of them had liquid in them. And was there, and where were the bottles located when you saw them? Right next to the hallway, just inside the southwest bedroom. And were there any bottles located at any other location? No. What did you do with these bottles that you described? All of these items were placed into evidence within the fire investigator's office as they had facilities to store them. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Did you find any evidence or any documents that would indicate that Mr. Kenneth Wayne Wright resided at 720 Imperial? No. Did you find any clothing that you can say belonged to Mr. Wright that was in the closets or in the house, someplace around the house? Not that I could say belonged to him, no. Mr. Hernandez, do you have any questions? Prior to the contact with the parole officer, you went through the residence, I take it, looking for other people? Yes. And at that time, you found a paper that had the parole, a parole paper, is that correct? Yes. And was that the only evidence you had that Mr. Zovac might be residing at that residence? Yes, that was. And when you, you contacted the parole officer through Orb Hatton, is that correct? Yes, he was there and he was, he had already been involved through the radio desk with trying to get in touch with the on-call parole officer. But you did not speak to that parole officer yourself? I did not myself, no. But the conditions of the search were that the parolees 
needed to be residing at that residence, correct? Yes, I believe. And outside of the parole paper, you had no evidence that either Mr. Wright or Mr. Zoback resided there? No. Prior to entering the residence, several things occurred, didn't they? Yes. And one of those was that Mr. Wright came up with the police officers? Yes. And that was outside the residence, wasn't it? Yes. And did you have any information that Mr. Wright was the one who had, had inflicted injury on Mr. Michael? At that time, I had no information, no. And you were surrounded, you surrounded the residence, you and your fellow officers? Yes. And there were several verbal commands for anyone in the residence to exit? Yes. And it was after several times ordering them to exit that you finally went to the front door, is that correct? Yes. Now, do you remember the exact words Mr. Zovac used when he invited you to come in? I don't remember exactly, no. And at the time he invited you to come in, did he, you have any idea of the number of residents, number of people in the residence? I believe we were told at that time that there were three other people in there. And so then when you came in the front door, you saw three people, is that correct? No, I saw one person at that time. And two in the northwest bedroom? I believe that's where the other officers found the other two. And the other officers found the other two and brought them into the front room? Yes. So all three people were then accounted for, is that correct? Yes. And even after the three people had been accounted for, you went through the residence looking for other people? I went through the residence to find the gym or both guns. At that time, were there was there any danger that guns could be destroyed or hidden? No. I have no further questions. Mr. Silly. I have no further questions, Your Honor. You may step down. How many more witnesses do you have, Mr. Seeley? Oh, I've got the member from fire marshal's office, and he would just basically give an opinion that... Other than that, do you have any witnesses? These are incendiary devices coming under 12. Do you have any other witnesses besides him? Yes, so the parole officer, and that will be very brief. We'll take about five minutes in and then proceed with the rest of the testimony. You may call your next witness.